Hi, I'm Sister Chick and it is a beautiful morning. You know, it's starting to cool down a little bit, so I'm sleeping with the windows open. And I'm just gonna start by saying, no, those aren't my roosters. You hear crowing if they pop on the video. They're my neighbors. I don't have any roosters. Remember, I'm a chick. I wanna start out by showing you guys something so cute. Check out this cup. Is this just not darling with the quilting block on it? And look what it says. It says green block and it's blingy. See that? And look at the lid. It's blingy. Thank you, Tracy L. I can't believe she sent this to me. I just wanted to thank her. Her daughter-in-law makes these. And I, I guess it's official, guys. I'm green block. Now, for those of you who are like scratching your heads going, huh? I did a swap quilt. It's called Scrap Jar Stars, and you'll find it in my videos. In fact, I'll link it below. And it was a swap quilt for my retreat. So all of my retreat sisters each did a different color on the block, and mine was green block. And occasionally, I bring into my video coral block, blue block. Hopefully, we're going to have pink block coming up soon. Anyway, let's get started with the video. First, Mm, love that cup. D did you guys hear that? Oh, April, hi. Die, am I glad to see you. I need your help. I am trying to pick colors for my next quilt. My problem is I love all colors and my stash can be pretty much summed up as rainbow. I would like to use something other than rainbow in my next quilt, but I'm not sure how to bring the colors together. Can you help me? Hey, April, nice to hear from you again. I would love to do another video. April, you know I love color. That's one of the reasons I got into quilting. I think we should start from the beginning with a color wheel. And you know, it looks like a rainbow, which I think is great for you, April, because I know you are all about rainbow fabrics and rainbow colors. You love them all. Hit me with your best shot, Di. So as quilters, don't we all love to make a quilt that is not only comfortable and cozy, but is really pretty to look at? We want a beautiful quilt that's eye-catching and that is just harmonious. Did you catch that word, harmonious? We're going to talk about harmony. Have you ever wondered what draws you into a quilt? And what about those colors that are working so well together? Well, colors working well together and then being really pleasing to our eye is called harmony. And to achieve harmony in a quilt, there's just a few little rules that you need to follow. And they're easy. Let's start with the color wheel, like I showed April. This is color 101, and there's three primary colors, red, yellow, and blue. Now, there's three secondary colors, and those secondary colors are here, and they are made by, of course, mixing the primary colors. So red and yellow make orange, yellow and blue make green, blue and red make purple. You know, I know you're thinking, I know that, I know that, but what does that have to do with quilting? Well, you need to understand how and why a color wheel is organized. When you look at the wheel, I think that's harmonious. You see a rainbow, and that is really pleasing to the eye, isn't it? But what if you don't want to always make your quilts rainbow? There's, there's all kinds of options that you can do. I think every quilter should have a color wheel of some sort in their quilt room so that they can refer to this. And it, it is inspiring. I picked up this little pocket color wheel at Maggie's on Main, my quilt shop here in Emmett. You know why? Because she's also an artist and a quarter of her quilt shop is fine arts because she's a painter. So this color wheel is really good. There's, there's a front and a back to it. Look, Here's monotone colors and how they work. I love color. I love color wheels. And I'm going to give you three easy color schemes that are going to help you make harmonious quilts. The first one is analogous. So if you're going to make a quilt using analogous color, you're going to use 
colors that are next to each other on the color chart, at least three. So you might use three shades of orange to yellow. You might use blue and green and purple. Those are analogous colors because they're next to each other on the color wheel chart. I took some notes here. Analogous colors, because they're right next to each other, create a calming, visually pleasing display. Isn't that what we want in our quilts? But there's enough visual interest in those colors, those analogous colors, to create contrast, so it's still visually pleasing. So you can definitely pick out the blues and the greens and the purples, etc. There's also warm and cool colors. Warmer colors are the red and the yellows, and the cool colors are the greens and the blues. Okay, so remember that while we're talking about color. The next color group or scheme I want to talk about is called contrasting. So on the color wheel, if you take a look at the red, what's opposite or what's contrasting the red? Oh, that would be this green. Look, purple and yellow and blue and orange. Those are contrasting colors. And you can make great quilts with contrasting colors. Because they're opposite, they create visual interest or you've gotta be careful because they can create tension. So it depends on what look you want to have. Now, in a quilt where you, you're using contrasting colors, you want to maybe balance out if you've got a little bit of tension. And what I like to balance it out with is maybe the same pattern. So the same, same pattern repeated on your quilt blocks would maybe kind of bring that tension or contrast together a little bit and it will create harmony. And actually, if you use a contrasting color, for instance, if you used a whole bunch of shades of blue and a whole bunch of shades of orange, and you were making a blue and orange quilt, that could be really visually pleasing. And it's also exciting. Now, the last group of colors that I wanna talk about is just one color. So it's a monotone or monochromatic color scheme, all right? The monochromatic color scheme is the same color, but used in different values. What is a value? A value is the variation of light and dark. Take a look at this. So here's blue, and here's a darker blue, and then it gets lighter. So it's if you're mixing paint, you would add white to make it lighter, maybe gray or black to make it darker, and you'd have a gradient effect on your colors. And again, those quilts are really calming and they evoke calmness and peacefulness. And then if you bring warm and cool into that, cool colors are a little bit more relaxing. And then you have a monochromatic quilt of maybe all blues or all greens or whatever, that, that would be a really kind of a chill, stunning quilt. But say you wanted a little pop of color. And, and by the way, you can pop a color that is cool or warm, but say you had a red monochromatic quilt, that room you're gonna put it in was all done in monochromatic grays, and then you popped it with a red monochromatic quilt. Wouldn't that be cool? Yeah, there's so many options you can do. I hope this lesson on color helped you. And April, do you have any questions that I can answer from this color lesson? I love blues and greens together. So three or more of those colors together would be an analogous, analogous, analogous. How do you say that? And should I have all of my blues in a block and all of my greens in another block or can I mix the blues and greens together? You want to know if you should mix more blues and greens rather than just three blues and greens. In a quilt, I would say absolutely yes. That's why auditioning colors is so important. Lay them next to one another physically and see how they look. See if they blend, see if they create harmony. See if one of them pulls from the other color. That's really important to do. So I think you should make your block using 
blues and greens and purples and no whites. Let's see how that looks. Oh, wow. Thank you for that information. That's exactly what I needed to help me with my quilt. Your question is a good one. And I think you should go for it. Since you're using analogous colors, you can mix several blues and several greens and several purples. I probably wouldn't put any whites in it. Keep, keep that block totally analogous with no white. I think it'll be a stunning block. By the way, what block are you making? So I'm going to take those colors and incorporate them into a Jacob's Ladder Quilt block. Oh my gosh, I love your idea. Let's see, I just did a monotone quilt. I think I'm gonna do complimentary then. And I'm gonna do that same block. It's gonna be a bit of a challenge, but I think I can handle it. Thanks, and let's check in after our blocks or quilt are finished. I'd love to see what you've come up with, and I know our viewers would love to see it too. This is great. I cannot wait to see what you do with complimentary colors. These are the complementary colors that I chose to work with this quilt. Now this line is by Stacy West of Buttermilk Basin and it's called Feed Sacks. And the reason I chose these is because they were complementary. So here's a blue, an orange, a green, and a red, and a purple, and a yellow. Let me show you the quilt block. Okay, here's a quilt block that I have finished from the line and this is called Jacob's Ladder and it's been around forever. My grandma used to make it. It's not any specific pattern designer but let me show you. I think believe this yellow that's kind of the ladder. That's why it's called what it is and to make this block can you see what it's made from? It's really easy. Four patches and half square triangles. Here is the block exploded on a design board that I want to show you. So it's four half square triangles and five four patches. And that's it. It's just how you place them on the block. I'm going to put the measurements for this block. So the measurement on cutting a half square triangle this size and on this right in the description below. So you're not gonna have to go to my website. You can if you want, I love it when you visit my website. But this block is that easy. You, you can see the layout, you can see how it works. It's a beginner block, but it sure doesn't look a beginner, does it? Let me show you how to construct this block. The first thing you wanna do is to make your half square triangles. And I do that by taking a heat erasing pen and it's, you can use a pencil too, it doesn't have to be heat erasing, and marking a diagonal line from corner to corner. Because what we're going to actually do is, is stitch a quarter of an inch on this side and a quarter of an inch on this side, and we'll put the right sides together with a, with a colored block like so. So what we do is we stitch here and here and then we press it to set the seams. We cut it right on this line. And then you have two half square triangles like this. So now that you know how to do that, let me move my color wheel. Let's come over here to the sewing machine. So the easiest way to do it for me is to lay the block out and I turn right sides together on these first three rows, and I sew down like so. I'm going to fold these over onto those that are already sewn, get them stitched up, and then I'll have three strips of the block. There you have it. You have the top, the middle, and the bottom row. Before I sew the next row, I want my seams to be very crisp and I want it to be easy to make sure I find these points. So I'm gonna go to the ironing table and press these 
Why don't you come along with me? This is how I'm going to press them. I'm just going to lay the blocks upside down like so. And on the bottom rows, I'm, and you caught me, I'm not setting the seams. I apologize. I know setting the seams is sometimes work. Hopefully my wool mat alleviates the need to set seams. But I'm gonna press the bottom seams to the outside and the top seams to the inside. And notice I'm pressing and not ironing. And then on the top row, whoops, I'm gonna set those, press those seams to the outside as well. Then I'm gonna flip them all over and press the heck out of them with my pressing spray. I'd say that's a well done pressing job. <laughs> so I'm going to put them back on the board so they stay in order take them to my sewing machine and stitch them together. Give them one more press on this seam and I'll be done. Let's sew this last seam. Isn't that a cute block? And I have a few sewn, not all of them, but I'm going to take you to my design wall and show you what I have in mind for this quilt. I'm going to do this layout. However, I have enough fabric left. Yeah, can't leave well enough alone. I have enough fabric left that I can make the four patches out of each of the colors, but I don't have a width big enough that I can make the half square triangles. So I am going to go to the fabric store and buy little itty bit. If they'll sell me five inches, I'll buy five inches so I can make four more blocks and I will have just a big square quilt. Let's go take a look and see what April did on her quilt. Here are my blocks. I haven't made a quilt yet. I'm still working on some other blocks but I'm very pleased with what I've done here. Oh my gosh, how did I know you were going to supersize it, April? Oh my word, you are the queen of supersizing, but it works. I want to thank Di of Sister Chicks Quilting for helping me put together these analogous blocks. With her color theory lesson, I was able to figure out what goes together and looks good together. Oh my gosh, April, your blocks are so pretty. When you get your quilt done, it's gonna be stunning. Um, I hope you really enjoyed learning about analogous color, and I noticed the last time you said it, you could pronounce it. You are so funny, I love you. Anyway, I sure had a lot of fun teaching color. This is my finished quilt. It, this is the bottom block, so you can pr practically see the whole quilt. Now, mine is a little different. I've got the complementary colors in each block. And the reason it works, because it's a little bit bah, out there, is because I have this pattern tying it in. And your eye is drawn to all of the sub patterns. You know, do you see the, you see almost the crosses like this, and then you see the ladders, and it's really, a neat trick and it allows you to put colors together like this and make it work. Gotta show you something. When I went to pick up, I, I went and bought another quarter yard of four pieces so I could make some more blocks. But check this out. This is from the line. It's called Feed Sack again. The line is Feed Sack and it's, it's adorable. I'm gonna put this on the border. What do you think? So the border, I've got enough to make about a three inch border. And then I bought enough 15 inches of the red and I'm going to bind it in the red. I think it's gonna be a really fun quilt. If you like what you saw today, I'd love a thumbs up, a subscribe, or 
share my channel with your friends. And if you have any questions about color or quilting that I might be able to help you with, put them in the comments below. I love your comments. Keep them coming. April, goodbye. It was so much fun working with you. Until next time we do it. Hey, we may have started something. I'll see everybody next week. Oh, and if you want to know what I'm doing next week, it's going to be a WIP week. W-I-P. Works in progress. I have a big stack of whips and I'm just going to plow through them with you cheering me on. See you next week. Bye.